Hello, Wealthy Wives and Friends. This is Cindy Sophia, author of Wealthy Wife, Meeting, Dating, and Marrying Rich Man, as well as the founder of the Wealthy Wife Academy. How are you doing today, Wealthy Wives and Friends? Yay! I am sitting here today. You guys know I'm thinking all the time. It's just it's how I'm built. But I was going over one of my favorite quotes. And this quote I actually include in the book, Wealthy Wife. And it is, don't be a woman that needs a man, be a woman a man needs. Let me say this again. Don't be a woman that needs a man, be a woman a man needs. Now, let me break this quote down to you because what's going to happen is some of you are going to see that part, don't be a woman that needs a man and think I'm independent, I don't need a man. Now, that's not what the quote's saying because you got to read the whole quote, be a woman a man needs. Meaning, what is it about you that's going to really inspire this man motivate this man, make this man actually want to be present for you and do for you and help up level you because it's going to be qualities about you that are going to put his mind at ease, that are going to help him view life differently, that are going to be that soft space for him. That's when that quote comes in, be a woman that a man needs. You are somebody he wants to pour into. I use this quite a bit when I talk about in reference to women, we are the containers that men pour into. We are the plugs that men plug into, literally. I guess that's sexy, you know, a man insert, you know, penis into vagina and guess what? It's like the outlet in the wall. We are the, we are the, we are the energy source that men plug into to replenish themselves. And unfortunately, you guys sometimes, once again, I'm not saying everybody, but too often women are not being, you're not having discretion in reference to who you're allowed plugging into you, which is depleting you. And if you're not caring for yourself, meaning you're not finding ways to replenish yourself, that means you are just basically burning yourselves out. You are sitting there with an empty container, so to speak, and you're not selecting men that actually have the ability to, or the desire to pour into you, to replenish you. So once they've burned you out, they move on to the next one to destroy. And once again, such most women don't understand that because they think that, you know, no, I don't need a man is that whole independent woman thing is, is dysfunctional when it comes to dealing with the masculine. So when I tell you guys that, like I said, a smart man, a truly, truly wise, affluent man, and even a non-affluent man, if he's got a great woman or in his life, he's going to protect her. If she is somebody who truly is in that space and position to help him pull himself together, is in that space to help replenish him, he will gladly, it's just a natural state for him to want to pour into her. It is like, it's, it's like, like those recycling fountains. You know, you see those, those well, like, let's use Vegas for an example, because you know, Vegas basically is, is a desert, but they find ways to recycle their water. So what happens is, let's say, for example, you look at this beautiful fountain and it's pouring into a, a beautiful vessel. So that's how it works. We replenish each other. We are, as our pitcher is filling up and overflowing, it overflows onto the masculine. It overflows into the man or the men in our lives that, that matter to us. And, and to, in order for us to stay replenished and to stay rejuvenated and to stay refreshed, they gladly pour back into us because a wise man knows that he needs to keep that woman replenished. Because when she's refreshed, when he has come in the door and he has been out there battling against the world, because like I said, because you guys, unless you deal with affluent men, unless you really spend time talking to truly successful men, you what well, guys want to compare them to just the typical guys you meet, they're not the same person. Okay? They don't even register on the same Richter scale. And I take nothing away from the average man. I guess I honor and respect any man that goes out there and handles his business, even if his goal is not to do anything more than work a J-O-B, but he's going to take care of his household. I respect that. But like I said, but my preference are affluent men and wealthy men, because I love a man that has that burning desire inside himself to do something big and to do, do it even bigger and better. Having said that, like I said, their mindsets are not the same. Their energy is not the same. And so many of them, they're driving energy behind them, usually as pain, disappointment, fucked up lives, early lives. You know what I'm saying? They have gone through stuff. And the, like I said, those are the men I love. I, I do. I, I Those are the men I just absolutely adore and appreciate and admire. Because even, and even when they are making their way up that ladder of success and all the shit they've gone through to get there, if you guys could sit inside their heads sometimes, you would run screaming into the night. I promise you, you would. 
because the things that go on in the quiet of the night when nobody else is around, when they can once again take off that that facade that they wear, you know, to 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 to, to appear polite in public, and what I mean that's as a veneer. If they, when they take that armor off and you had a chance to sit there and see who actually moves behind it, there are so many emotions that go on there and most of them are extremely intense. Like I said, those are the men who have my heart. Because I know come the next day, they put that veneer back on and they go back out there and they keep on swinging. They keep on doing battle. And at times they get crucified, but you know what? They are that phoenix that gets burnt in those to ash, but comes back and rises again. That takes a certain kind of man. That takes a certain kind of drive and desire and push. Like I said, that a typical woman will never be able to deal with. And you guys understand this. I'm saying nothing shady. I'm saying nothing disrespectful for those of you that do not have the capacity to handle that kind of man. It's okay. Because it takes a lot. And if you're not somebody who understands how to, you know, maintain yourself and also understand how to express the ways he needs to pour into you to replenish you. Because like I said, men need guidance in reference to what we need from them. And women sit around getting so frustrated because a man's not doing for her the way she wants him to do for her. Did you ever express to him what you need? And if you express to a man what you need in order for you to feel good and feel replenished and he ignores you, then leave his ass. Seriously, because he doesn't care about you. A man who cares about you will ask you, what do you need? And so many of you have the inability to express your needs because you spent so much time trying to be independent. I don't need a man. And when you finally find, get in a situation where you have somebody actually, but, but you want a man, that's the crazy part, but you want a man. You want a man that's going to treat you the way a true man treats a true woman. But you have no idea how to express yourself, so you guys just keep eating your words. And then eventually he stops, a good man stops trying because he's like, you know what? Nothing's going to satisfy you because if he keeps trying to guess to figure out how to make you happy because he, only he's guessing because you've never given him a, in a clue as to what he needs to do to make you happy. Now both of you are pissed off and frustrated. And a truly good man, especially one who's building or one who actually is in a position where he is successful, he's not going to stay because you're going to be your distraction. Your energy is a distraction. You're a distraction. He's going to move on. Or if he does stay for however long he's going to stay, he will find somebody else to cover that need. Meaning that person who actually could allow, will allow him to pour into her and him to replenish her. And she can actually pour back and replenish him like that recycling fountain, that recycling water fountain. He's going to eventually find somebody, even if he hangs on to you, you know, he stays in that relationship with you because maybe there's some other need that you satisfy. But you're not going to get you're not going to get aspects of him that mean the world to you that you would really love to know more about. So understanding that statement says, "Don't be a woman that needs a man; be a man, a woman a man needs." That's about you understanding once again how to allow yourself to be in that space of receiving from a man, so that you are able to actually give back to him. And I, th I, and I already know this to be true. And where the disconnect comes with in reference to women, especially in reference to dating affluent men, when you because so many, like I said, I want a man's going to take care of, I want a rich man, I want this, I want that, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, do you really? Because you guys are thinking that he's going to, this man is going to be like every other guy you dated up, up until you meet him. He's not. The average Joe and an affluent man are two different species of men. Once again, I take nothing away from the average Joe. If he's handling his business based upon how what he wants out of life, I respect him. But if you think that mindset of the average Joe is going to equal the, the mindset of an affluent man, a man who's gone through some crazy shit to become successful and is still doing the crazy shit to stay successful, you're in for a huge surprise. I'll say it again. If you could sit with them at night, early morning hours before anybody else has gotten up and just understand the emotions that run through them, it would freak you out. I'm not kidding. It will freak you out because of the intensity of the fire that burns inside of them. You know, you have to be a woman who basically is made of asbestos, so to speak. You need to be fireproof to deal with these men. You need to understand how when he's cr ramping up, how you can actually pull back and understand how to speak to them. 
and understand to express to them how they need to speak to you if they want to ha- if they want to receive the best from you. Because I've told you guys, I'll never let a man disrespect me. I've had men, I guess, I tr- trust me, I told you, I'd guide, I, I am in relationships. When I'm in a relationship, long-term one, the man I'm with is usually very intense. I like intense men for whatever reason. I do. I'm built for them. And I'm good with it. But I initially, some, at the times I've had to express to them, okay, I hear you. I see you. I, I see that you're upset. Okay. Let, but you need to like figure out how to speak to me a little differently if you want me to be here to assist you. Because you know, just, you know, the words don't have to be pretty, but how you speak to me, you do need to watch how you're speaking to me. And once then we have that conversation, it's usually a conversation we have, you know, when we're both calm and that way he understands like, you know, I'm, I'm, I've got you, I've got your back. I've got you. I'm here for you. But like I said, but you have to express yourself to me in a way that allows me to stay open to allow me to be that vessel for you to pour into so I can actually pour back onto you to help you relax, to help you find that level of peace that you're going to need, even if it's not complete peace at the moment. But that will come over time. Because, you know, that's a work in progress. But like I said, learning how to be a woman that doesn't need a man, but becomes a woman that a man needs is a glorious position to be in as a woman, because that's where your wisdom comes in. That's where true woman, woman's wisdom, a true woman's wisdom comes in. That is a woman, excuse me, who is understanding how to value her feminine energy. That's the woman who understands how to value herself. You know, because when you're running around talking about independent, 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 I don't need a man, don't need a man, don't need a man, you are missing out on so many aspects of your life. And to some point in purpose, that means you don't value yourself because you're not trusting yourself enough to allow the masculine to be present in your life. Those statements are usually for women who are fearful of men. Think about it. Most of you do not trust men because, once again, you have not understood how to present yourself to the masculine in a way that requires the masculine to honor you. You have to understand how to honor yourself, which means you have to understand how to appreciate yourself. You have to understand how to appreciate being a woman and all the wackiness and the wonderfulness and, and just beauty that goes with it. No apologies. No allowing somebody else to talk to you and treat you in any old kind of way. But like I said, but it also means you have to understand how to allow men to show up for you and how to express yourself in a way that makes them want to and happy to do that for you. You know, I talk about, because you guys know right now, the whole trend right now is talking about the dominatrix secrets and why the dominatrix is such a powerful part position in reference to a man. Now I'm talking about things because right now I'm not an active dominatrix, you know, I'm not. I'm more of what we consider to be a lifestyle mistress, meaning that the aspects of that dominant woman are just part of who I am. You know, I have not practiced as a professional dom and it's been a while. It has been. But it's still those aspects and the things I've learned in that space are still very much a part of my personality. Like I said, yes, I'm very soft and very gentle as a woman, but I am a dominant woman. When I say dominant, it doesn't mean I have, once again, that I need to emasculate the masculine. When I say I love men, I mean that. I told you a friend of mine, he doesn't believe that because he can, he doesn't understand the whole concept behind, you know, that mental space and that, that, that emotional space of me being who I am. He makes the assumption that if I'm in that space of working from the BDSM side of it, because he's like, how can you love men? I go, because I go, because you don't understand what it means. I go, you're making too much of it. I go like every average human being does who doesn't understand the lifestyle. You're making too much of it. I go, you got to try to make it a black and white situation. It's not a black and white situation. It has to be this or that. No, there are many gray areas in this type of lifestyle, in this type of mental and this type of thinking. Like I said, the men who I've spent time with over the years, all of them, even, I mean, even the ones who were not, I would not view as submissives. Like, and you know, came to me in that capacity of a dominatrix to, to be my submissive. Even the guys that I've been involved with long term still found value in that, those aspects of my personality that made it possible for me to allow a man to be vulnerable with me. You know, I think some of them were relieved when they found out that that was part of my, part of my, part of my um, toolbox, shall we say, because they understood that I was not going to judge them. 
in their in their vulnerabilities. I was not going to judge them in those moments that they were having in my weak moment, as what would be classified, excuse me, as a moment of weakness. We all have moments of weakness. Just because a man is big and powerful doesn't mean he doesn't have those days. Matter of fact, they probably have more of them than you realize. Like I said, because they're responsible for so much and so much rides on their shoulders and their ability to, to create out of thin air. So I ask you guys when I talk about this, do you have this, the ability to be the woman who actually becomes someone a man actually needs? Because that takes courage on your part too because you have to take time out to look at yourself. Are you doing the work on yourself? What are you doing to, to establish yourself emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually? Like I said, the finances come. What are you doing? How are you enhancing yourself? Like I said, a man being present, that's the bonus point in our lives. A man who actually wants to be present with us, wants to do for us, wants to watch us grow and excel and become even better in what we love and desire. Like I said, ladies, they want to do it. There are so many men out there that long for a woman who they can actually pour into. They're working so hard and they don't have that soft space in their life because they keep running into these knucklehead women. And y'all call you guys knuckleheads. I call I call us out. I will definitely call us out. I was laughing. I was talking to a gentleman and he said, I'm more, I, I defend women. I actually don't defend you guys. You understand. I don't, I don't defend us because if we're wrong, we're wrong. I, 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 and I'm the same with men. I mean, I love the masculine, but if it's me, if he's wrong, he's wrong. I'm not going to defend bad behavior. And most women behave very badly because once again, the, the training that we're given is poor training. It's very aggressive training. It is not in helping us understand how, like I said, coexist in a harmonious way with men and vice versa. So I had to laugh, but I, I wanted to say something like, no, I don't really defend women because if they're bad. If they're, if they're awful, they're awful. I'm not going to defend, I guess, defend bad behavior, but I will stand up and, and be that champion for us, for women and for, you know, for us. When I understand that women, honest to God and honestly and truly want to understand how to truly be her best self from that position of her feminine space, I'll defend you guys all day on that one. If you're sincere. Once again, learning how to co-create, coexist and complement the masculine living in a way that is very harmonious. You guys, I want you, I, oof, I'm working on it. I, I feel like sometimes I could just have enough, I, I need to like be able to clone myself to send me out there, you know, into the world to make this happen because when it happens, it's such a, oh, it's just such an incredible space to be in ladies and gentlemen, because I guess I know the guys, that the guys are listening. Such an amazing space to be in. And that, like I said, is one of the blessings that I have in life. It's because I have been around the masculine all my life. And I still enjoy the company of great men. And nothing makes me happier than when they're talking to me and I watch them relax and I watch them smile. And it's so funny when they look at me and say, you know, I'm going to tell you something I never tell anybody else. And they'll, and they'll say it and they'll be, they'll be sitting there. It's so funny. They'll be sitting there like, I don't even know I'm going to tell you this. I have never told anybody what I'm about to tell you. And I'm like, what? And they'll say they'll stop for a second and look at me, and they're like, and I also, and, and they'll say and they'll say this too, because I also know that telling you this is no one else is going to ever know. I'm like, no, I I am the keeper of many many secrets. Okay, I truly am. Um, and I tell them you're right. I go, this is strictly between you and me, because I understand all of us need a place to go where we can just be. So once again, don't be a woman that needs a man. Be a woman a man needs. So that means you have to understand how to be discreet. You need to understand how to hold yourself in a way that once again always honors you. Because when you honor yourself, other people will honor you. Remember, law of attraction. What you put out there comes back to you. It has to. It's one of the laws of our universe. So what are you doing to learn how to be that woman that a man needs? He doesn't need you angry. He doesn't need piss. He doesn't need attitude. He doesn't need you scheming. I told you guys, affluent men, truly rich men, they know. 
If you're trying to run game, you cannot run game on them. If you run across one that lets you do it, it's because he has issues. He has emotional issues and he gets off on that. But majority of them are not functioning from that space of wanting to be abused by a woman just because. They know their livelihood, their businesses, their transactions require them to be aware of human nature down to the most minute details. And they can sum you up in just a matter of moments upon meeting you. And sometimes they let you guys run that game because it's entertaining for them. They got a little time to kill. And I love watching it. I love watching men play with women that think they're actually getting over on them. I think it's entertaining as hell. I really do. So why? But I guess once again, those of you that follow me, that's not your headspace anyway. But what are you doing to become a woman that a man needs? And I'm not talking the way of an obsessed man. Those That sucks. You don't want somebody obsessing over you. It's, 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 that's not a good situation to be in. We're talking about a man who is of a healthy mental space, emotional space. Maybe not perfect, but he's not somebody who's crazy or, who's going, to have to, or going to become crazy. Because I say this again too. Anything I mentioned to you are skill sets that you should be wanting to do for yourself anyway. It's not just about what you're going to do for a man to attract a man. It's about what are you doing also for yourself. You want to be emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually sound. So what dragons, I don't want to use the word dragons, I love dragons. Okay, what gunk is in your system that you need to work out? Because once again, you want to understand how to be that vessel that a man is able to pour himself, pour into. Because once again, as you are filling up, you're automatically going to the overflow is going to pour onto him. And as long as your pitcher so figuratively is staying full, that means you stay relaxed and you stay open and ready to assist him when he needs assistance. Because sometimes they don't ask initially. But once you get to really know somebody, because you guys know I do I do promote long-term relationships. I'm not talking just about in reference to romance. I'm even talking about the friendships that you can develop with an affluent man. I like long-term. I like knowing people for a while because just me being who I am, I'm going to care about somebody deeply. If I get to know somebody, I like them. I'm going to care about them. I'm going to care about their, I'm going to care about their mental state, their emotional state. That's just once again, how I'm wired. And because once again, I know what men, what men are up against in life, especially if I'm dealing with a man of color. Uh, you know, I just, uh, I told you guys, I don't use the term as black. I don't even use the word color but I'm gonna have to right now. But especially a brown man, because once again, I know the history of how, we're, how they're treated in this country and throughout the planet. But even though I do appreciate and honor and love all men, no matter what color or shade they come in. But I do know sometimes my guys need a little extra care. So what are you doing ladies? How are you going to step up and allow yourself to be that woman that a man needs. What are you doing to build, to create and build your character? Like I said, because it's not just all about the physical. Yes, you want to be attractive. Yes, you want to be, you, you know, you want to be attractive. And I'll say this again. It's not about you having to be skinny. It's not about you having to have a modified body. It's not about you having to be young. You don't have to be white, even though I had to laugh. Some chick put a comment on my one of my videos about that. I had to laugh and I read it. How did she put it? She was, the whole comment was rude to some extent. Because she didn't even use my name. I don't know who she was referring to. I, I'm better than the average black. I'm like, really? What is that supposed to mean? I knew what it was. But anyway, I thought that was so funny. But she was saying that, you know, in her, read the comment. It's in one, on one, I think the video in reference to um, affluent, dating women of color and affluent men. Something, one, something in reference to women of color dating affluent men. But she was like, she made the statement that you, you know, you know, wealthy men want only want to, you know, or attracted basically to only white women. They don't really want to date anybody else. And I'm paraphrasing her comments because I'm saying that on this one for a reason. But I just thought it was so rude. It's like, you know, to me, I don't like making blanket statements and I dislike when other people make blanket statements. You can only discuss what you experience based upon who's attracted to you. That's why I said younger women, you cannot advise older women. In older women, you shouldn't be going to younger women for advice about how to date affluent men. 
their dating men that are attracted to younger women, just like an older woman can't talk to a younger woman about a man who only wants somebody who's closer to his age. So it's very difficult for a white female to sit here and tell a woman with brown skin that she's, whether she is or is not attractive to an affluent man or affluent men. That was arrogant beyond arrogant. Beyond arrogant. Because I'm like, how are you going to sit there and tell somebody that they only want someone that looks like you? So that's what I'm saying, ladies. You've got to understand how to fortify yourselves because you're out there against females that, honest to God, think their damn word is a gospel. I know this seems like a sidebar in reference to talking about men, but I'm just saying this because I want you guys to be able to, to form your own opinions based upon your own experiences. Don't let anybody else influence what you, what you think and how you're going to be received. You don't know until you try. So it's very important, like I said, that you learn how to care for yourself. You learn how to think for yourself. Especially if you want to date an affluent man. He is not your average Joe. He requires a whole different type of care. So, I'm still laughing about that comment that she made. Oh my God, really? I was like, well, whatever. <sighs> I don't know. Human beings entertain me some days. What can I say? So think very carefully. What are you doing to improve yourself in order to be a better version of you? I'm going to ask this question too, just thinking about that comment. Where are you going to receive your information? Like I said, because some of you are chasing down information from individuals that really can't tell you shit about what's going on in reference to affluent men and you. That's like a blonde telling somebody that, you know, you know, affluent wealthy men don't want to date anybody but blondes because the men who are attracted to her like blondes or redheads saying nobody wants to date a wealthy man doesn't want to date anybody but a redhead or that's like one of a brown skin saying that wealthy men only want to date brown skin not white girls I'm just saying nothing is that black and white in life nothing is that A or B there are tons of gray areas in between so learning how to set yourself up to succeed and learning how to become your best version of you so that you actually can still remain open and not be fearful based upon other people's opinions, based upon insecurities that you may have. How are you setting yourself up to become that woman that a man needs? Because I'll say this one final time, because once you understand how to do that, it opens up a whole bunch of opportunities for you. And a smart man, when he has met you and understands that you truly are a quality woman, who understands how to, who is not fearful of who he is behind the facade, ladies, he's not going to let you go. If he's, got, if he's smart, he's not going to let you go. He's going to do what he needs to do to make sure you're satisfied. And that's where the powerful become even more powerful. You and him, or you and them, if there's more than one. So think about what I'm saying. Like I said, guys, keep your eyes open. I'm still finishing up the final details of the Dominate Your Secrets Masterclass. If you have not registered and got yourself into the uh, the mini course, Dominate Your Secrets, Unlocking True Feminine Power, I'll say it again. I do recommend you get it, especially if you're thinking about going into the masterclass with me when I finally um, put it up for enrollment. You want to take that course. Like I said, it gives you some insight and starts helping to you to start readjusting your mindset. So until we talk again, guys, I love you. Bye-bye.